challenge if any all the historians, people who understand what happened in the in, in the, the times of the past. The, the first thing they did when the land was conquered by another people, they erased your history. They came in, they changed your your your, your doctrines, your philosophies. They learned what you what you um called to be a religion, and then they when they took over, a lot of them um took on these relig religions, claiming and professing to be them. This is Revelation chapter two, verse nine. It says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. So the Most High is saying he knows our works, what we're doing, and tribulation, what we're going through, and the poverty that we're in. Now, wait a minute. Poverty is that you have your own land. You have your own dominion. So who, who are the Israelites there now? Because the Israelites, the Bible's talking about is in poverty, in tribulation. Let's see. It says, um... And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, yeah. but are the synagogue of Satan. Same thing in Revelations 3 and 9. There's a certain people, and matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to read something to y'all real quick. This is the book of Maccabees. Mm -hmm. These are one of the um, books, yeah. many books that was removed out of the Bible, mm -hmm. so you really couldn't identify to what was going on. Yes. If everybody, whenever you get a chance, I want you to go read um, St. John's, the 10th chapter. The 22nd verse. My read friend, it. I'm going to read it real quick. St. John's chapter 10, verse 22. It states, it says, And it was Jerusalem, the feast of dedication, and it was winter. Mm -hmm. When you read throughout your Bible, yes. you don't read nowhere about the feast of dedication. That's right. It's recorded in the Bible, our, whole, our holy days. Yeah. It tells us in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. The Feast of Dedication is not least listed in uh, Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Why? Because it's in the book of Maccabees. Mm -hmm. Nowhere will you read in the Bible about the Feast of Dedication unless you have the Apocrypha, the rest of the Bible. The 1611 edition King James Version Bible was before the King James Version that we have today. They removed out the Apocrypha, Apocrypha due to certain things that was in it, like yeah. this. Yeah. This is uh, 1 Maccabees, chapter 3. And I'm going to read verse 46. It says, Wherefore, the Israelites assembled themselves together and came to Mashpah over against Jerusalem. For in Mashpah was a place where they prayed aforetime in Israel. Then they fasted that day and put on sackcloth and cast ashes upon their heads and rent their clothes. So what was happening at this time of the Maccabees that the Israelites were basically um, thrown out of the land, thrown out of Jerusalem, and other nations inhabited that, that land. It says... Uh, I'm sorry, actually it was the Greeks who inhabited uh, the land at that time. But it says, verse 48, it says, And they laid open the book of the law, which is the Bible, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. What they were doing is, they were going into the Bible and trying to depict it as themselves, like they were the ones. Yes. This has been going on for a long time. Long you have time. something called iconoclast. An iconoclast is someone who comes in, a painter, and paints over certain pictures and changes it. Matter of fact, your Leonardo da Vinci's, your Michelangelo's, yes. these were our kind of class. Yes. were hired. A lot of people got bent up about that da Vinci code. What a lot of people don't realize is Leonardo da Vinci didn't come till almost 600 years after, after. Christ. The Jer Jerusalem was already destroyed. The Israelites were already scattered throughout Egypt into Africa. So what was he painting? Who was he depicting? There's, there's lots of lies and false doctrines going around yes. in this world. Yes. And we have to rid ourselves of this. Rid yourself. So, again, the point I'm making is we are the Israelites. And we're going to get back to some more curses showing us who we are and what we must do. This is Deuteronomy, 28th chapter. And, again, this is a process of elimination. Read through this chapter. See who these curses fit. And I'm talking about every last one of them. Mm -hmm. It only fits the Israelites. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you something. This is Deuteronomy 28, verse 37. It says, And thou shalt become an astonishment. The most I said, we're going to become an astonishment. Something looked at. People are going to awe at us. It says, A proverb and a byword among all nations where the Lord shall send it. This is where you get the word, and uh, um, I hope I can say this, nigger. This is where you get the word spick. They mad at me for saying Exactly. This is where, these are these proverbs and these bywords that were given to us. Let the Holy Ghost have its way. Exactly. Give it to the Lord, give it to give, my brother. And what our people, God make this for you. People need to realize is, this Bible is a, is a witness to you to yes. inform you. Yes. Who you are. Yes. According to the Bible. Yes. 
Matter of fact, this is Isaiah 58. Let me get it real quick. Isaiah the 58 chapter. I'm going to start at verse 1. And this is why I'm here today. Again, we're going to read this over. Yes. Cry aloud. Cry aloud. Spare not. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression. Lift your voice. And the house of Jacob their sins. That's what we're supposed to do. We yes. have to understand that when Christ came, he did not change no. anything. No. Glory to God. Our people believe that Christ came and gave everyone a license to sin. Uh -huh. like, he, like he said, go off and do what you want to do. Uh -huh. All you got to do is believe in me. Look, uh -huh. Let's see if that's true. All right. Come Revelations. on. Revelations. Chapter 1. I'm sorry. Re Revelations 14. Give God's glory, churches. Give God's glory, churches. Revelations chapter 14, verse 12. It says, Here is the patience of the saints. Yes. Here are they that keep the commandments yes. of God and the faith of Jesus. Yes. It's 120. <laughs> you, it's not like you could just have it. That's why the scripture says, Grace without, uh, I'm sorry, um, Shall we only live by grace? So shall we sin and let grace abound? God forbid. Mm -hmm. We're not supposed to let our. We're not supposed to um, take advantage of the grace that we have in Christ. Yes. We're supposed to take that grace and with the joy, with joyfulness and gladness of heart, keep these commandments. Matter of fact, watch this. Deuteronomy. I'm sorry. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. It says, "Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life." and may enter in through the gates into the city. So it says, blessed are they to keep the commandments, that you may have rights to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Okay, well, what's the city? Revelation chapter 21, verse 12. This is the gates that we're going to be entering through. And we have to keep these commandments in order to, and believe on the Son, that He was our sacrifice, that He's the Son of God, that He came and walked the earth. Revelation chapter 21, verse 12. It says, it had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. This is how we're going to get into the kingdom, folks. By keeping the commandments, believing on the Son, and understanding who we are as a people. Again, this information is imperative. Imperative. This is the most important thing, the most important decision that you're going to make in your life. Is understanding who you are and where you come from and what you must do. Matthews, the fifth chapter. Because again, there's a lying spirit in this world that's telling us that Christ came, did away with the law, statutes, and commandments. And now all we got to do is just believe on him. Well, I'm telling you right now, that's not true. And Christ, it, out of his own mouth, he said, what we have to do. This is Matthews, chapter 5, verse 17. It says, think not, and this is Christ speaking, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Has all been fulfilled yet? It says, till heaven and earth pass. Is earth still here? Yes. Is heaven still here? Yes. He said not one jot or one tittle, not one comma or a period was going to leave the law. So what is Christ telling us? He's telling us we still have to keep the commandments through him. Verse yes. 19, it says, Whosoever shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. It says, But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great, great. in the kingdom of heaven. Glory to God. Again, which, and and this, this is very repetitive in the Bible where Christ is telling us, keep the commandments, do what's right, keep the laws of the Most High. Yeah. Even after Christ left, let me get that real quick. This is Acts. Right. Even after Christ left, why were the apostles, the disciples, mm -hmm. why were they still keeping the law? Yeah. If Christ came, if you, and, and think about it, these men walked with Christ. So why were they still keeping the law? 